where to file your sales tax return. So once you receive your certificate of authority, your registered sales tax vendor, you then must file sales tax returns. When you first register as a sales tax vendor, you're going to be a quarterly filer. And these are when the returns are going to be due. They're always going to be due 20 days after the period ends. So we're in February, so we're in the last quarter. December, January, and February, that return is going to be due March 20th. And then it goes into March, April, May. It's going to be due June 20th. June, July, August is going to be due September 20th. And September, October, October, November is going to be due December 20th. And even if you don't make any sales, you still need to file a sales tax return as long as you have that certificate of authority. Because if you don't file a sales tax return, they're going to penalize you. They're going to say, you didn't file your sales tax return, you're a registered sales tax vendor, and then they're going to estimate how much they need to owe. So even if you, you just got your certificate of authority today, you're not going to open up until April, you still want to file that sales tax return through March 20th, put zeros. I have a sales tax, a copy of a sales tax return in the handout. Zero gross sales, zero taxable sales, zero tax due. It's perfectly fine to fill in zeros. Just to make sure that you're filing that sales tax return. Now, you may have to file monthly or annually, depending on the amount of your taxable sales or the amount of sales tax that's due. If you make $300,000 or more, then you're going to become a monthly filer. If you owe $3,000 or less in tax for an annual period, then you'll be an annual filer. And when you go to web file your sales tax returns, the correct return will automatically be made available for you. Or you may receive a letter that says, based on your prior sales tax return, you're now an annual filer. Question? I just did mine, and I just heard you say enter in all zeros. It says gross sales and then total non-taxable sales. I had put in my gross sales, and it was 100% of my non-tax. My non-taxable was 100% of my gross, mm -hmm. and it still rendered out all zeros. Is that an okay way to do it? Yes. Yeah. If you didn't make any sales, no, no, I made sales. Made, okay, you but, made sales, but, it, but they were all ST 101s with the uh, different bookstores that sell one of my products. So, you're, so you you're, just said put in zeros. Right. If you didn't make any sales, I made sales. sales. So what was your gross sales? The gross sales on this were $2,100. Okay, and your exempt, your non-taxable sales? $2,100. Correct. So you don't use you your So I did that okay. Because everything you sold was exempt from New York State sales. Great. That's perfectly fine too. Had I put in zero under gross sales and zero under taxable stuff, would that be all right as well? Because the gross sales technically Okay, great. So just do it the way I did it. Right, right. Great. Your gross sales is your total of your taxable sales right. and your exempt sales. Got it. Thank so you. It's, uh, and a lot of people, they do that. Like they just put zero for gross and they put the exempt sales. But, because you may have taxable items and exempt items, so you want to total everything you sold. Then the exempt items would be what's exempt from your state sales tax. If someone gave you a resale certificate right. or they gave you a organization, that's going to be the total of your non-taxable or exempt sales. And then you have your taxable sales. And so your exempt sales and your taxable sales should total up to your gross sales. Thank you. You're welcome. So you must e-file your sales tax returns if you are going to do your returns yourself, and if you have broadband internet access, then you have to e-file your returns. You can e-file your sales tax returns, you can e-file any amended returns, like you, let's say you already filed your sales tax return for the, the charter buses or whatever you did, and you filed the sales tax return, then you realize that, oh, I forgot to charge one company sales tax you can e-file an amended return for that same quarter. It's going to show the difference in the taxable sales, and then you're just going to pay the sales tax that's due. You can also e-file any credits for return. Let's say you sold someone something, charged a tax, and then they came back later and said, no, I'm exempt here, you know, please, I want my money back. So you give them your, their money back, you file for a credit, 
of the sales tax that you spend, and you will come back to you. So what if, in your case, you didn't charge the sales tax, and now you're going to give them an invoice for sales tax, and they say no? <laughs> you, they might, they might do that. So who has to pay this sales tax? You know, they might do that, mm -hmm. and then you might be concerned about the relationship you have with that customer. Yeah. And so you know, you might have to pay it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No one break out. I'm about to eat it. Right. Yeah. You're gonna have to. Yeah. This is going to be a really good letter writer. <laughs> and then going forward, just make sure you always get the tax and say, why are you charging me tax? You didn't charge me last time. You can just say, you know, based on the law, here's the regulation, and here's the bulletin. These services are subject to your state sales tax. And then also, you always want to pay the full amount of tax that's due. Um, and again, that goes to some people. Um, especially small companies, sometimes they can't meet payroll, I've seen it, and they just use the sales tax money to, which is, you know, illegal, but people, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, that's a lot of people, they, they feel that they're in a bind, and the sales tax money is sitting here, because remember, the customers are giving to you. That's why it's a trust tax, because they're entrusting you with the money, your state is in you're expected to get that money. That doesn't even belong to you. But sometimes people go into that sales tax account and they use it to, you know, pay payroll or they need to buy something. So that's why it's always important to keep it separate from everything else. So you have to keep it separate bank account. Yeah. Now, there, New York State doesn't require that you keep a separate bank account. In certain circumstances, they do. If you are, if you have gone under an audit <coughs> and you were, let's say. Under, you know, you weren't reporting everything, you were keeping the money, then New York State would then require that you have a separate bank account. But you don't have to, but we advise that you do. Just so that you don't co mingle the funds. So keep that separate from yeah. buying whatever I need for my business. I have to have two accounts. Right, I would suggest that's, that's the best thing. Whatever you collect in sales tax goes to a separate account from everything else. And then you pay your sales tax, you file your return, and you make that payment, it goes directly from that sales tax account. Okay. And these are just some sales taxes. Okay, you always want to maintain a separate bank account. You want to maintain proper internal controls. Make sure that not one person is doing everything, because I've seen instances where bookkeepers or accountants, they then stole the tax, the sales tax. I did a jeweler once, I audited a jeweler, and I was looking at all of his invoices, and there were way more invoices total, way more money than what he reported on the sales tax return. And it was just like, well, where's, where's the rest of the money? Oh, my bookkeeper, she did everything. Sure enough, he was trying to call her, she was nowhere to be found. <laughs> because she had taken the sales tax money, changed the sales tax returns to reflect what it was, but when I looked at all the invoices, there was way more sales, way more sales tax. So it's important that you have proper internal controls. Wow. There's a segregation of duties. Not one person is doing everything. You want to protect your assets. You want to protect your transactions. And then he was responsible for paying that. You know. So again, file your returns on time, even if there's no tax due. And seek advice from a tax professional if necessary. You know, Steve mentioned that he has an accountant who handles everything for him. You know, if you feel more comfortable doing that, then, you know, please do that. When you're first starting out, it's difficult to get the funds to have a whole team. <laughs> so, <laughs> so while you're first getting started, you are going to have to... I am the I and team. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I. So it's just important to keep these things in mind. Now, this right here is the most important thing you need to know as a business owner, and that is to maintain adequate records. And this tax bulletin, it's on our website again, it's a great bulletin that details how you should keep records, what you need to maintain. You want to keep copies of all of your invoices, <coughs> everything you've given to a customer. I know PayPal, how many people use PayPal? I do. PayPal, you know, you can get a report, it lists all your invoices. Invoice everything. 
So that way you have a paper trail for it. It doesn't have to be necessarily paper, but if you have electronic copies of your records, keep that. So that whatever you put on the return, your personal income tax return, and your sales tax return, the records match up to it. You know, it wants to be, and here we go, you want to make sure that it's dated, detailed, verifiable, traceable, and kept in good order. So all of the invoices for a year should total up to what you put on the return, and it should work in the opposite. I should be able to go to the return, back to the invoices, the invoices to what you put on the return for your income and also your sales tax. You want to keep track of all your purchase records, your expense records, your purchase records. Anything that you purchase to do the business, you can purchase exempt from sales tax. That's your cost of goods sold. And then you would then issue a resale certificate to whoever you're purchasing the textiles from or the jewelry, the beads, whatever you do, the food you purchase. You would issue a resale certificate saying, don't charge me tax, I'm using this to compile what I'm selling, the service I'm providing, and then I will then charge tax. And you want to keep your sales tax records for a minimum of three years from when the return was due. So. We're in February, so it's December, January, February. It's due March 20th, 17th, 16th, 15th, 14th. So you want to keep records from December, January, February 14th for the return that's going to be due March 14th. So December 13th, January 14th, February 14th. You keep records from that. Anything prior to that, you can get rid of. They also suggest that before you get rid of any records, you contact the tax department and say, you know, I'm getting rid of these records. Is it okay? Will you, are you coming to look at the records? Is it a possibility I'm being under audit? So you want to do that as well. So if you're being audited, how many years do they go back? Three years. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to keep the records for three years. So if you're being audited for the year 14, would they still be able to go back to 13 and 12? No. Okay. There's a statute of limitations. Of three years. Of when, yes. Okay. So if I was going to audit your records, I would, this is February, this is March, April, May, June 20th. I would do March, April, May of 15. I would look 15 forward. Okay. And if you have a point of sale system, just make sure that the system keeps record of every sale and tracks all transactions. This is another big one, it's called use tax. There is a place on the sales tax return, um, it's called purchases subject to use tax. And this is something that a lot of business owners are not aware of, but they need to be made aware of. If you purchase anything outside of New York State and it comes into New York State and you weren't charged New York State sales tax, it then becomes your responsibility to accrue the use tax. So anything you purchase to do your business, you can purchase exempt from sales tax. But if you were purchasing maybe for your restaurant or your diner and you purchase maybe some silverware online from a company in California, they shipped it to you here, but they didn't charge you any New York State sales tax. You then have to accrue that tax. eBay, anything on eBay? Yeah. eBay, um, Amazon, well, they weren't for a while Amazon. It was a big court case with Amazon because they weren't collecting New York State sales tax, mm -hmm. but now they do. So it's important to keep in mind if you're making purchases, paper, or you buy desks or computer or whatever, and you're not paying any New York State sales tax, it comes into New York State, you should have come to use tax. Wait, can we go over this again? What yeah, the yes. use tax is? Yes. Um, I'll give you an example. Well, I'll tell like this. When I was an auditor, the first thing I used to look at were the company's expenses. I would pick up an entire year, and I would go through every expense. And I would see if they were making any purchases outside of New York State, and they weren't paying New York State sales tax. They may be purchased in California, maybe Arizona, shipped to New York State, 
that company did not charge the New York State sales tax. Maybe they aren't registered as a New York State vendor, sales tax vendor. So if I saw, okay, they purchased a desk, or they purchased some paper, if they had purchased it in New York State, they would have paid tax on it. But because they purchased it online from another company, maybe they didn't pay New York State tax. Tax is going to be doing that still. So anything that comes into New York State, tax is due. Yeah, but the sales and use tax, like a <coughs> professional engineer, I don't have a sales and use tax certificate because I'm not right. So how does that work? Am I still being recorded? <laughs> 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 